In this lesson, we'll cover the Envy's robust support for IP control and our IP control utility, along with a brief review of the IP control API documentation. The Envy supports extensive IP control for leading control systems like Crestron, Crestron Home, Control 4, Savant, and RTI. It also supports an open API so developers can roll their own IP control for Envy if desired. You can find links to the drivers for these systems and related documentation, including how to control screen masking systems based on the detected aspect ratio from madvrnv.com. Let's start with the Envy IP control utility, which streamlines various administrative tasks, such as managing profiles and system settings, and provides advanced tools for monitoring and testing IP commands. While many of these functions can also be performed in the Envy menus, the utility makes things faster and easier, especially when keyboard input is desired, like for naming profiles. The IP utility also enables system integrators to monitor IP commands sent from the Envy, as well as interactively test IP commands. It also can serve as a virtual remote control in a pinch or during setup when your IP control system isn't yet in place and the remote control doesn't reach. The utility runs under Windows but can also be used on a Mac with Windows emulation software like Parallels. It must be run on the same local network as the Envy. You can download this utility from madvrnv.com. To install it, simply extract the mvipcontrol.exe file from the zip and double click to run it. The zip file also contains source files that you can learn from should you want to create your own IP control interface. Let's explore how to use this utility now. The first thing we need to do is connect to the Envy. We do this by entering the IP address of the Envy into the connection field here and press connect. The Envy must be powered on, of course. You can get the Envy's IP from the Envy system information menu or from your own local network tools. Upon connecting, it will auto populate the wake on land field here, or you can manually enter the MAC ID. You can then wake up the MV from a powered off state in the future by clicking on the wake on LAN button. The bottom half of this tool is the output window. It shows the results of any interactive commands entered and displays real time feedback from the MV IP control system. For instance, as the MV detects different aspect ratios and signal information, you'll see this information reported here. This is a great way to monitor its IP activity and learn how it works or for interactive testing and troubleshooting purposes. As we run various commands in this lesson, you'll see the output here. Next, you can also see the options to power off the MB, to put it in the standby or even restart it. Next, we have options to store or restore settings to the installer, suggested and user settings. We discussed the purposes of these settings in a prior lesson. The store button uploads the current settings on the local MV to the slot chosen, while the restore button updates the current settings to match what you select. To use the store option, you must know the password which authorized dealers can get from MadVR Labs. Note the settings file section here. The download option saves the local MV configuration currently in use to a file on your computer and the upload option can be used to upload a previously saved file to the same or a different MV on the local network. This is very handy for making a backup of the configuration you can store on your own system, which can then be restored using the upload button. Note that LUTs are not stored as part of the settings, but can be backed up separately as we cover next. See the Backup and Restore Guide on MavorEnvy.com for more information about backing up and transferring your settings between Envies. Moving along to the 3D LUTs file section. The Enumerate button lists all LUTs stored on the Envy, like this. The Rename, Delete, Download, and Upload buttons are used to manage your LUTs accordingly. Note that LUT files are rather large, so depending on your network speed, it can take a few moments when downloading or uploading these. Next are the EDID blot sections. These buttons are used to download the EDID of the currently connected display or from one of the slots that an EDID block has previously been stored to. You can also upload EDIDs as well. These functions generally are only needed under special circumstances. 
For more information about these functions and in what situations you may need to override EDIDs, see our lesson on managing EDIDs. Let's turn our attention to the virtual remote control. You can click on any of these buttons and the Envy will respond just as if it received the button presses from the actual remote. This could be handy during the initial setup if your control system isn't yet up and running and the remote is out of range. Or likewise, should you lose your remote and do not have a control system, you can use the virtual one here while waiting for a replacement. The buttons in the Get Information section provide a convenient way to send some popular test commands to the Envy. Let's give that a try. Last, but certainly not least, there's the Customs Commands field. This enables you to send IP commands to the Envy primarily for experimenting and testing purposes. Now, how would you know what commands to send and how to interpret the output? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let's turn our attention to our IP control reference guide available on MavYourEnvy.com. Now, as you can see from this guide, it covers everything you would want to know as an IP control integrator. It starts with a brief introduction, talks about making connections and communication syntax. It also goes over the notifications and how they work. This is as far as how the Envy will notify your IP control utility or your control system about events, such as changes to the aspect ratio or incoming signals. It goes over the command reference, such as powering things on and off and how to open menus, close menus, emulate key presses, displaying messages on the screen. For example, you can put any custom message you want on the screen, which can be very helpful for deeper integrations. It talks about temporary aspect ratio overrides, and it talks about how to make requests for information, such as getting the current aspect ratio, or the masking ratio, incoming signal ratio, temperatures, and so forth. It also goes into custom profiles. You can automate creating custom profiles if you wanted, renaming profiles, enumerating them. It also covers source, display, and custom profiles and how you can do the same in those. And then it talks about accessing options, and we're going to do that here in just a bit. This is as far as if you wanted to actually get from the menu what current settings are or actually override settings in the menu. This shows you how to manage LUTs through IP integration and commands such as toggling on and off different MB features. It also allows you to manage settings through IP as well, IP management, EDID management, and other types of commands. It talks about different notifications here as far as powering on and off and standby, restart, reloading the firmware, and how to open menus, close menus, aspect ratio notifications, how all this works. So this is basically a recap of what we saw earlier. We're kind of showing you like a reference guide for this information. Now, what this section is, is it talks about how this guide does not list every single possibility as far as what options you can control. So this shows you how you can actually go through using the MV menus and the IP tool to monitor what settings are changed when you make changes, and then you can mirror those same commands in your own IP control, and we're going to go through that now. Now that we learned about all sorts of custom commands, let's try some of these out. For instance, here's what the Open Menus Test Patterns option does. Now we can send a Close Menu command to close that menu. Now, notice too how as we navigate and change menu settings and menus, the output window shows what IP commands to perform these same functions. So as you can see, as I'm moving along, the IP control will emulate what I'm doing. As I switch different menus and so forth. Note also that the guide explains how to find the command to directly set any menu item as desired. This is done by setting the menu item as you want using the remote 
and then checking the corresponding commands echoed in the output window. For instance, let's say you wanted to set Motion AI's strength to high. First, we make this change in the MV menu like this. Notice when we did this, it output a change option command into the output window. We're going to use that in just a moment. Now, let's put this back to balanced. As you can see here, when I change the menu item over to high, we got this in the output. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this, and then I'm going to paste this into my menu option control here. And now when I go ahead, I do need to remove the value type. When I go ahead and send this, now watch the look command will automatically switch to high. And voila, that's how you can figure out how to control the menus with direct discrete IP control commands. And that about covers it. As we learn, the Envy support for IP control is very robust, providing maximum flexibility to seamlessly integrate the Envy into any system from the most basic to the most complex. Now that we've covered how to use the IP control utility, it's time to move on to our next lesson.